open side, we've got two to the power X, this exponential function that grows crazy fast, right? Like it's X gets bigger, two to the power X just shoots up. Then we've got this plain old X, a linear term that's just chugging along nice and slow. When you add them together and set them equal to eight, you're finding this sweet spot where these two totally different kinds of functions balance out. It's like watching a race between a rocket and a bicycle. Now, let's talk about proving there's exactly one real solution to this thing. To do that, let's define a function f of x equals 2 to the power x plus x minus 8. Why? Because solving 2 to the power x plus x equals 8 is the same as finding where f of x equals 0, right? That's where 2 to the power x plus x equals 8. To figure out if there's one solution, we need to know how this function behaves. First, let's find its derivative, f prime of x. The derivative of 2 to the power x is natural log of 2 times 2 to the power x, because that's the rule for exponentials. The derivative of a to the power x is natural log of a times a to the power x. The derivative of x is just 1, and the derivative of minus 8 is 0. So f prime of x equals natural log of 2 times 2 to the power x plus 1. Now let's think about this derivative. The number natural log of 2 is about 0 0.693, which is positive, and 2 to the power x is always positive for any real x, whether x is big, small, positive, negative, doesn't matter. 2 to the power x is never 0 or negative. So natural log of 2 times 2 to the power x is positive, and then we add 1, which makes f prime of x even more positive. That means f prime of x is greater than zero for every single real number x. What does that tell us? If the derivative is always positive, then f of x is strictly increasing. Picture it. As x moves to the right, f of x just keeps going up, never flattening out or dipping down. A function that's always increasing can only cross the x-axis, where f of x equals zero, at most once. Why? Because once it crosses, it's not coming back down. Here's what happens next. Does it cross at all? Let's check some values to see if f of x goes from negative to positive, which would mean there's a root somewhere by the intermediate value theorem. Let's try x equals 2. So f of 2 equals 2 to the power 2 plus 2 minus 8, which is 4 plus 2 minus 8, equals negative 2. That's negative, so we're below the x-axis. Now try x equals 3. f of 3 equals 2 to the power 3 plus 3 minus 8, which is 8 plus 3 minus 8 equals 3. That's positive, so we're above the x-axis. Since f of x is continuous, 2 to the power x is smooth, x is smooth, no breaks or jumps, and it goes from negative 2 at x equals 2 to positive 3 at x equals 3, it has to hit zero somewhere in between, and because f of x is strictly increasing, it can only hit zero once. Boom! We've just proved there's exactly one real root, and it's somewhere between two and three. That's our first big win. Moving on to the next point, let's narrow down where this root is by testing a few more numbers. This is like playing a game of warmer, colder to zero in on the answer. We know it's between 2 and 5, so let's try some points in there. Let's compute f of x at x equals 2.4. First, 2 to the power 2.4, let's just use a calculator for precision. 2 to the power 2.4 is approximately 5.27803164. Now add x equals 2.4. 5.27803164 plus 2.4 equals 7.67803164. Subtract 8, f of 2.4 is approximately 7.67803164 minus 8, which is approximately negative 0.32196835. Still negative, so x equals 2.4 is too small, but we're getting closer. Let's take another example. Try x equals 2.5. Here, 2 to the power 2.5 equals 5.65685429 plus 2.5 equals 8.15685429. 
Subtract 8, f of 2.5 is approximately 0.15685429. Now it's positive. So the root is between 2.4 and 2.5 because f of 2.4 is negative and f of 2.5 is positive. We're tightening the net and it's looking like the root is somewhere around 2.4 something. Here's what happens next. Let's get serious and find this root numerically, starting with the bisection method. This is like a super reliable treasure hunt. We start with an interval where we know the root is lying, say 2.4 to 2.5, because f of 2.4 is negative and f of 2.5 is positive. The idea is simple. Cut the interval in half, check the midpoint, and keep the half where the function changes sign because the root has to be in there. Each step shrinks the interval by half so we get closer and closer. Let's do it. Start with a equals 2.4, b equals 2.5. The midpoint is 4.9 divided by 2 equals 2.45. Compute f of 2.45. 2 to the power 2.45 is approximately 5.46227733. Add 2.45, which is about 7. 0.91227733. Subtract 8, so f of 2.45 is approximately negative 0.08572266614. Negative, so the root is to the right of 2.45. New interval, 2.45 to 2.475. The midpoint, 2.475. F of 2.475 is approximately 5.5593628789. Add 2.475, which is about 8.03436289. Subtract 8. F of 2.475 is approximately 0.03436289. Positive. So the root is to the left. New interval, 2.45 to 2.475. Let's keep going. Midpoint, 2.4625. F of 2.4625 is approximately negative 0.02578993. New interval, 2.4625 to 2.46875. Midpoint, 2.46875. F of 2.46875 is approximately 0.00438952275. Interval 2.4625 to 2.46875. Midpoint 2.46625. F of 2.46625 is approximately negative 0.01017316. Keep this up, and after 12 steps, we get to an interval 2.46782265625 to 2.46787109375 with midpoint 2.46784667968 where f of 2.46784667967 is approximately 0 0.00002124072 super close to 0 how precise is this the initial interval was 0.1 wide 2.5 minus 2.4 after 12 bisections, the width is 0.1 divided by 2 to the power 12, which is 0.1 divided by 4096, approximately 0 0.00024414. The error is at most half that, about plus or minus 0 0.00012207. So our midpoint, 2.46784667967, is within 0.000012 of the true root. That's like five decimal places of accuracy. Pretty solid for a method that's so straightforward.